So I've got lots of people asking me whether the UK has physician assistants or physician associates. And I've been wondering, I've tried to do my own research, but I wasn't getting enough information like I wanted. So I wasn't confident enough to do a video about this topic. Luckily, I met this beautiful lady, Akosia, at the Nessus Museum of Engel recently. And I got to realize that she is a physician associate. So today we're going to ask her all about it. Stop that. <laughs> I'm so happy to have you here, Akusia. Can you please introduce yourself? Okay, so as Nanel mentioned, my name is Akusia. I am born and raised here in East London, Pacific. And yes, I'm a UK trained physician associate. So I did an undergraduate degree in biomedical science. And on finishing my degree, I wasn't so sure about working in the lab or becoming a biomedical scientist. I wanted to see what I could do with my degree. And so I spent a few years working in clinical research and actually, at first, when I qualified, I worked a year as a postgraduate mental health worker. There was a new program because I knew that it's very likely that I would, do, I would want to do something clinical. So then I went to train to become a physician associate. And yeah, I've been qualified now for six years. Wow. So that you went to do like a degree? Yes. So it's a master's degree. Master's degree. Okay. Yeah. They and don't do it at undergraduate level. So actually now there's, I think there's two universities that I know of that do it, you can do it straight. Um, so you can do it as an undergraduate program and it's four years. But at the time that I did it, um, it, it was only postgraduate. So you have to have a life science degree first and then you do this as a master's degree. And the master's degree is how many years, if I may ask? Two years full time. So two even years. two years full time, yeah. So either 24 months or 27 months because they give you the time to write your dissertation at the end wow and if somebody's watching me and then they want their physician associates program from the undergraduate level which are the two universities that do it university of reading and university of central lancashire and it's a four-year program a four-year program wow so what is the job role of a physician associate in ghana there's a role called physician assistant i don't really know if it's the same as physician associate in the uk I know of this gentleman who used to be a physician assistant in Ghana. He's currently in the UK and he told me the UK does not use physician assistant. So it's like he's going into nursing now. Mm -hmm. So what do you do as a physician associate? Okay, so the physician associate role was actually adapted from the physician assistant role known in America. So that's the UK role, which I think is similar to physician assistant in other countries around the world yeah and some countries used to call it I think medical officers or clinical officers so there's different names but yeah so it's um so the role pretty much is we're medically trained to work along so it's extra work workforce for the doctors at the junior doctor level so we assess patients by history taking examination investigation both therapeutic and diagnostic and uh, managing patients with management plans just like the junior doctors would do and we do that under a um, dedicated clinical supervisor which tends to be either a consultant or a GP and based on your level of experience and how well your supervisor knows you will sort of determine how much more they are happy for you to do within your clinical area of work really. Yeah. I think it, it must be just like the physician as assistant in Ghana because that's basically what they do. They are just like doctors, sort of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. on a regular day, what time do you go to work and what is your day like at work? So it depends where you work. So my first role as a physician associate was in acute medicine. Um, and then because of the acute medical setting, we used to work long days. So eight to eight um, sort of clerking um, patients. So seeing acute medical patients who come through A&E or who are directly referred by the GP or brought in through ambulance, we would clerk, we would see them. Um, and then we do like a post take round with the consultant who would then see them again and kind of finalize their plan. So we would see them if we were working on the, what was called then like a rapid assessment medical unit, which was mostly physician associates at the time that worked there. And then we would see patients on ward rounds day to day with the other junior doctors in the medical team, an acute medical unit. And then there was also um, a section called ambulatory care, which we would see patients who don't necessarily require admission, but they need to be investigated and they can't, that can't be done in primary care. So that was acute medicine. And then at that time, so we would work eight to eight if we were doing the rapid assessment medical unit. 
um, and we did nights at that time as well. So we would either work eight to eight during the day, three to four shifts a week. And that included one weekend a month. But then that afterwards, it changed a little bit. So we stopped doing nights because at the time, the newly qualified doctors weren't working nights in the hospital. So we managed to stop working nights there. Um, but otherwise, if we were working on the ward, doing ward rounds, it would be Monday to Friday. So that was acute medicine. Then I moved to cardiology, which was just Monday to Friday ward a ward job, pretty much. And now I've I've actually I've now started a new job in GP, which is also Monday to Friday. But there are extended hours that you can do on weekends or later evening. So you can basically work everywhere, like. Uh, yeah. So at the GP surgeries, what do you do? Do you see patients, assess them and prescribe and um, request for blood and other diagnostics to be done? What is that what you mm-hmm. do at the GP surgery? Yeah, yeah. Do so we pretty much do what the GP does. Yeah. yeah, we pretty much do what the GP does. The only thing, sorry, I forgot to mention is that what we can't do as UK trained physician associates is prescribe and request ionizing radiation. Um, so that's like x-rays and CTs. So you, you and that's mainly because, no we can't do that yeah so we can recommend so in gp when you do see a patient you request because most prescriptions are now electronic you request the medication on the system and then the gp will then issue it okay yeah. wow so what is the career progression like if you know for a nurse you know you're starting at band five you know you're progressing to let's say band seven band eight band nine what is it like for physicians mm. So that's the thing, because the profession is quite young in the UK at the moment, that's where the limitation is a little bit. So you qualify as a band seven, the agenda for change band seven, and you can, you kind of progress in terms of pay within the increments within the band, um, or you can progress then do more kind of managerial roles, which would be like managing a team of team physician associates, and that's a band eight role. But that's pretty much where the cap is at the moment, especially if you work in um, hospitals. A lot of physician associates do also teach on physician associate programmes in universities. So a lot of people go into teaching um, and run in the physician associate programmes or research you can do as well. But those are the main three things. So management, teaching, um, so lecturing in universities and then research kind of at the moment because it's still being developed as a role. Start at band eight when you qualify. Did you say start no, you eight? qualify at band seven. You start at band seven, yeah. And then with time, you can progress to let's say band eight and then do yeah. it. Okay. What is the regulatory body for physician associate at the moment? So when the physician associate role was established here in the UK, the government were not regulating new healthcare professions, so we don't have a statutory regulatory body at the moment. It's going through the process of becoming regulated. So at the moment we have a physician associate managed voluntary register, which is under the uh, Faculty of Physician Associates, which is part of the Royal College of Physicians at the moment. And every employer pretty much requires you to be on that. Now being the government in 2019 um, decided to finally commit to regulating the physician associate role. So it's now going through consultation with where the GMC have agreed to regulatory body for the PA in short role here in the UK. And that's estimated to sort of conclude at the end of next year. But it's been a long process. So I don't know whether the end of 2014 will be the case, but that is the plan. That's the process that is going through at the moment. So you said and at the moment, you, you people, you don't really have like a specific regulatory body. However, you're sort of like under the Royal College of Physicians? So yeah, we have a managed voluntary register. So that was, that's our body at the moment. But it's not a statute, so legally, it's not a, like a statutory reg- regulatory body, like how you have the GMC or the NMC for nurses. We don't, we're in the process of getting that and we will, it will, we will be under the GMC once that is completed. Yeah, but because wow. most employers want you to be on that managed register, that's, everyone pretty much is on it because that's what, governs our code of conduct and everything is there a pathway when you go on the mm-hmm. website is there a pathway for foreign trained physician associates or physician assistants or pas to be able to register and join you guys in the uk and practice in the uk so unfortunately you you have to train in the uk or 
you have to train in the US. So you have to be a, an American trained PA to work here in the UK as a physician associate. So if you've trained anywhere else as a PA, you to work here as a PA, you have to do the program here. I'm thinking that it's probably because you don't have a solid like regulatory body as yet. Yes. I'm sure that once you people, let's say, get under GMC, there will sort of be like a straightforward pathway for them because yeah. there's a pathway for medical doctors trained overseas to, you know, come to the UK. So I'm yeah. sure that once you guys are under the GMC officially in the future, maybe there's probably going to be like a pathway for foreign trained PEs. What do you think? Yes, I think it's more likely. Yeah. Do you know of any other country that sets foreign physician associates or you're not sure? Yeah, so there's a lot of European countries that have um, physician associates. Do you know of any other Western country that has a, a straightforward pathway for foreign trained to register to join? No, yeah. okay. no. I'm not sure that there is, but yeah, there's something to look into. But as far as I know, there, there isn't. Yeah. Do people get confused when they see you in the hospital and they call you doctor and then you don't know whether to respond to, as a doctor and meanwhile you're not a nurse as well? Do people yeah. get confused? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so there's a lot of confusion because the role is very new. So most people that you come across haven't heard of the role unless they've worked with you or they have someone in their family that is a PA. Um, and people generally will call you a doctor. People refer to you as a doctor, sometimes even the actual like consultancy work will just refer to you as one of the doctors just to not confuse patients so much because they have to go <laughs> you have to go through the whole process for ever explaining what it is and sometimes it's just too complex and people don't quite get it so yeah people do refer to you generally as doctors um but obviously if if things need to be clarified then you would explain the nervous do you have like a license or a pin as well we have a the, so the pa managed voluntary register number number um, okay. yeah so we do have that okay so what would you say will be the main challenges of the role um i think one of them is the fact that it's new and we generally as people don't like new things so some people that you work with are kind because they don't really understand the role they're a little bit apprehensive about what you do or working but that's to be honest it has changed a lot when i was training it, I was part of the first cohort. Um, I did wow. my PA training in Worcester and I was part of the first cohort there to do wow. it. So we were completely new. And at the time as well, it was the junior doctor strike. So some of the registrars were not really keen on us or working with us because they felt that maybe we were coming to take over their role, which we can't because we're not, we're not doctors. Um, but so that kind of lack of understanding of, of the role does make some people a little bit worried but generally it hasn't been too much of an issue to be honest because most of the time when you're employed to work somewhere is because the consultants and the team generally understand the role they value it and you're you are well looked after generally i think the main limitation is the lack of progression yeah at the moment yeah that's the main limitation i think and what's the salary like but like i said is a so you qualify as a band seven so which currently is approximately 43,000 a year starting. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the starting year. Depending also where you work, if you work in the London, out of London, of course, it will be a little bit higher or lower based on where you work, but that's the general amount, yeah. So what advice would you give to people who might watch this and be interested in embarking on this journey, become physician associate? Any, your final words for anyone like that? Okay, so I always ask when people ask me or inquire about being a physician associate, I always ask them if they've considered medicine because you're doing the same role and we're created to, you know, want to progress and advance and evolve as people. And it, within clinical medicine, the highest role in, is a consultant. And if you're a physician associate, you're not going to be able to become a consultant as it stands now. Of course, as the role progresses, you there might be physician associates that become consultants, like how there's consultant nurses, but that's not an option at the moment. So if you really want to become a physician associate, and it's because you really like medicine and you want to progress within your clinical practice, then I always ask everybody to really think, do, do, it might be worth actually just doing medicine if that's really what you want. But of course, I think that the profession is, is good um, it's very enjoyable. Of course, you get as much as you put in because you're not a, a doctor, you're not in clinical training. So you won't be in a clinical training program once you qualify. 
which forces them to always read and study because they're doing exams. So your knowledge can become limited to what you do on the day-to-day -day basis, unless you force yourself to read and progress that way. Um, of course, depending on the demand and where you work as well. So I always encourage people to think about medicine. If, you, if you're not so worried about becoming a consultant and you don't have a problem with that thing, yeah, it's shorter. Yeah, well, it works out to be three, four, um, five years in total if you do the postgraduate master's route with having a BSc first or four years if, if you do go down the path of doing it straight from undergraduate route, but there's limited universities that do that at the moment. And then, yeah, just make sure that when you're applying, you know what's required from your university. So because you can, any life science degree you can apply, including if you have a healthcare BSc, like nursing or audiology or radiography, things like that you can apply but people who have also done things like psychology can do it but they just need to make sure that you have, have done modules in human physiology or biology as well so check and if you're international you want to apply as well you just have to make sure that you check what the UK equivalent is of your qualification as well but there's lots of information on the FPA RCP website you can get all the information there because most of the UK programs were all modelled off of the St George's program. That's a good website if to look at if you are applying for it because that's kind of the standard. And another thing to mention actually is some universities require you to do an aptitude test before as part of your application process. So just to look on look at the university website and see exactly what they require you to have before applying. Wow. And is there a pathway for you as a physician associate to become a doctor? Like, do they have a course, like say you do two years, if you're a physician associate, you become a medical doctor? Not here, no, not in the UK. That's the exact reason why I always say, if you want to, if you think very well, like think hard about it, whether you would like to do medicine instead. Um, of course, once you qualify as a PA and you decide you want to do medicine, you can, but you'll save yourself time and effort and money if you just go straight and do medicine to begin with. But there are some universities in Europe, um, like Ukraine, that take into consideration you having a, a physician associate qualification and they, instead of doing a four-year postgraduate program in medicine, it's cut down to three years. Well said, and now I understand better. When people ask me, I know exactly what to say. So thank mm -hmm. you so much, Akosia. Bye. Oh, bye.